Hi and welcome to the second video on trig graphs. You may have noticed in the previous graph video that we didn't have to consider compound or double angles when sketching trig graphs. In this video we now look at where compound and double angles do come into play with trig graph questions. We will then have a look together through two worked examples. So compound and double angles may be needed when solving equations, in particular often when needing to find points of intersection to establish where graphs are above or below each other, or when needing to find where graphs are zero in order to establish where they are positive or negative. Let's see now what this all looks like in application. Question one here has two parts. The first part is asking us to sketch these two trig graphs, both over the interval minus 180 to 180, and the second asks us to determine using your graph the solutions to this equation. Take note of both these questions and pause the video now to give them a try. Let's look at the sketching of these two graphs first. Did you notice that the amplitude for the graph of f is 2 and that the graph of g has been shifted one unit upwards? You may find it helpful to first make a quick rough sketch of the basic sine and cos graph separately just on the side somewhere and then figure out the necessary changes from there. You may even find it easiest to sketch them for a full 360 degrees in both directions. Let's consider f first. Here is a rough sketch of the basic sine graph, y equals sine x. The two aspects we need to consider are the interval required for our final sketch and the changes necessary according to the equation of f. So this indicates the part of the graph we need to sketch. And the amplitude of f is 2, so we must stretch f two units from its midline. This is then f. Now let's have a look at g. Here is a rough sketch of the basic cos graph, y equals cos x. Again, the two aspects we need to consider are the interval and the changes necessary according to the equation, this time of g. So this here is the part of the graph we need to sketch. And this time it is this plus one that we notice. It indicates a shift one unit up, as this plus one adds one unit to the y value for each point. And so this will be the graph of G. When sketching trig graphs, just a reminder that axes intercepts must be indicated as well as coordinates of turning points, and then also remember to add in their labels. If you want to take another moment now to try the second part of the question, then pause the video here. For the second part of question one, you may at first glance have wondered how on earth you're meant to use your graphs to solve this equation. Let's have a look at what happens when you expand this sine double angle here. Once you've expanded, then on the left you now have terms which you can factorize, and once factorized using common factor, you now have the product of f and g. In other words, for their product to be zero, they are wanting the solution for x where either one or both graphs is zero over this interval. From the sketch, we can read off that f is zero at minus 180, zero and 180 degrees, and g is zero at minus 180 and 180 degrees. And so these are our three solutions to this equation over this interval. Here is our second worked example. This time we are given the sketches of two graphs for the interval minus 90 to 270. Take a moment now to pause the video and give the questions on these sketches a try. The first two questions can be done either by looking at the equation or at the graph. From the equation we can see that f has an amplitude of 2 and a period of 180 degrees. And from the graph, first identify f on the sketch and then read off its amplitude, which is the distance from the midline to its maximum minimum. And here you can see it's two units. And then its period, where you can see one full wave completes in 180 degrees. The third part of this question has two parts to it. The first is asking us where f is equal to g. In other words, where the two graphs intersect each other. The interval they are focusing on here is between and including 90 and 270 degrees. 
So for 3.1, let's put the equations of the two graphs equal to each other and then apply the sine double angle expansion here. By multiplying out the bracket and taking all terms to the left hand side, we have a situation where we can factorize using common factor. To solve here, remember your trig equation thinking. For cos of x being 0 indicates that we have cos of an axis angle. And if you make a rough sketch here to help you, you can see clearly from your sketch that cos of x is 0 when x is 90 and 270 degrees. And then for this bracket to be 0, sine of x must be 1 quarter. And if you remember, this can be classified as a type 1 trig equation, a ratio equaling a value, which means find the reference angle and then solve for x considering where sine is positive. Here we get a first and second quad solution, 14,5 degrees and 165,5 degrees. But if we check up at where the two graphs intersect within the required interval, we only need to give this one solution. In other words, for all three of these solutions for x, it is important that your solutions lie in the required interval and make sense according to the sketch above. You can see in this sketch that there are in fact two more points of intersection, but they don't lie between 90 and 270. Looking at the graph shows us that we could have read off that the two graphs are equal at 90 and 270, but we did need to solve using the equation in order to find the value of x for this point here. Let's go on now to look at the solution for 3.2. It's the points of intersection that we have just found that now help us to answer this next part of the question, where they are asking us to determine the values of x for which f is greater than g on the interval 90 to 270 degrees. The interpretation for this particular inequality is that it is asking us for which values of x is f above g in this interval. And if we take a look at the graphs, we can in fact read off the solution. Cf lies above g between 165,5 degrees and 270 degrees. Note the question is only asking where f is greater than g, and so the answer does not include where the graphs are equal to each other. It might be a good idea to consider the values for x for when f is greater than or equal to g. This would then include x equals 90 degrees as well as including the 165,5 and 270 degrees in this interval. The worked examples covered in this video include many aspects of trig graphs. We do recommend, once you feel totally comfortable and confident with these examples, that you dive into some further practice in order to expand your confidence, as there are several ways trig graph questions can be asked. Thank you for watching these videos on trig graphs. We hope that what we've covered here will really help boost your confidence. If you have worked your way through the trig series from the beginning, you are doing really well. There is just one more concept to tackle, and that is solution of triangles. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.